A really bad week in the S&P 500 as the inflation narrative ticks up yet again. What levels have to hold in the S&P for this rally to continue? Welcome to the 12-Minute Trading Market Minute for Sunday, the 26th of February. Here is the S&P 500 chart, and it's built into triple fractals. We have the monthly chart on the left-hand side, weekly in the middle, and the daily time frame on the right-hand side. Now, we actually have examples on this triple fractal chart of all four rules that we use for fractal energy trading. Rule number one states that larger time frames dominate the trend. This is a monthly swing off the bottom. So since the mid-October bottom that we had on the bad CPI print, we've seen a very strong rally going from 3,500 all the way up to 4,200, 700 points. And of that monthly swing, we've had a weekly uptrend with higher lows and higher highs. And so far, this pullback is nothing more than a higher low for now. So rule number one, again, is that larger time frames dominate the trend. So these larger time frame moves, this monthly swing, this weekly uptrend are not going to just die immediately. That's where we go to rule number two. Reversals start from the inside out at the smaller time frames and then they propagate higher. So what we've seen at rule number two is the daily chart has put in a lower high, lower low this week. And so this has transitioned into a downtrend. We have a daily downtrend on the daily chart. Now, that is not yet a weekly downtrend. This is just a weekly pullback or a weekly swing so far. What would have to happen for this to progress into a weekly downtrend is we'd need to see some type of either a lower high setup and then a subsequent lower low, or we would have to see the price just completely take out the prior swing low all the way down here, which is about 37.50. We can also see rule number three into play, which is that ascending patterns break to the downside. And the converse of that is descending patterns will have to break to the upside eventually. And rule number four is that range expansion goes to range contraction. So we're almost at exhaustion here. And I believe that when we get to Monday, Monday, Tuesday or so, we're going to be at pretty severe exhaustion from this 200 point move, which has been initiated by old our friend Jimmy Ballard at the Fed. So what we're likely to see here, unless there's some other exogenous event which comes along, is that we may see some range expansion going to range contraction. Again, this is rule number four. We might see this consolidate and might even see it bounce. This is the very fastest way for this chart to recharge its energy is to go back from whence it came. So there's potentially a huge tipping point that might happen in the next week or two if we do see the price falling down, holding support at this 61.8% Fib retracement, bouncing back up again. And this would sort of set up that weekly potential for a lower high. Now, if it dies from there and undercuts through this week's low, then market is toast and we're probably heading lower to explore maybe as far as the October lows once again. On the other hand, if this bounce leads it to a brief consolidation and then drives above and starts putting in higher highs and higher lows on the daily chart, then this could just turn into a big weekly pullback and a subsequent slingshot move to the upside. So obviously there is a huge amount at stake over the next week or two and is worth watching for this. So it's rare that we get into a situation where so much is at stake based on what happens over the next few trading sessions. But there you go. So first of all, we have got to see this thing hold support at the 61.8% FIB. Find some way to either consolidate or bounce back up. And again, we're still not out of jail if that occurs, even if we get a bounce back up, because this could turn into a lower high and roll over. So this point here, this is where we get into the big tipping point right here based on any kind of a bounce that we see into this coming week. So I'm on the cash index again. So if we see any close below 3930 
on the SPX cash index. That means that we're probably going to fill in the entire triangle heading down to 3750 or maybe even lower prices. We'll take it one day at a time, but those are some of the price levels to watch for right now. That's it for today's Market Minute. We'll see you in the next one.